When I was quite young, my father had one of the first telephones in our neighborhood. I remember well the polished old case fastened to the wall. The shiny receiver hung on the side of the box. I was too little to reach the telephone, but used to listen with fascination when my mother used to talk about it, then discovered that somewhere inside the wonderful device lived an amazing person. Her name was Information, please. And there was nothing she did not know. Information, please, could supply anybody's number in the correct time. My first personal experience with this genie in the bottle came one day while my mother was visiting a neighbor. Amusing myself at the tool bench in the basement, I whacked my finger with a hammer. Pain was terrible, but there didn't seem to be any reason in crying because there was no one home to give sympathy. I walked around the house, sucking my throbbing finger, finally arriving at the stairway. The telephone. Quickly, I ran for the footstool in the parlor and dragged it to the landing. Climbing up, I unhooked the receiver in the parlor and held it to my ear. Information, please, I said into the mouthpiece just above my head. A click or two and a small, clear voice spoke into my ear. Information. I hurt my finger. I wailed into the phone. The tears came readily enough now that I had an audience. Isn't your mother home? Came the question. Nobody's home but me. I blubbered. Are you bleeding? The voice asked. No, I replied. I hit my finger with the hammer and it hurts. Can you open your icebox? She asked. I said I could. Then chip off a little piece of ice and hold it to your finger, said the voice. After that, I called information, please, for everything. I asked her for help with my geography, and she told me where Philadelphia was. She helped me with my math. She told me my pet chipmunk that I caught in the park just the day before would eat fruit and nuts. Then there was the time Petey, our pet canary, died. I called information, please, and told her the sad story. She listened. Then she said the usual things grown-ups say to soothe a child, but I was unconsoled. I asked her, why is it that birds should sing so beautiful and bring joy to all families, only to end up as a heap of feathers on the bottom of a cage? She must have sensed my deep concern, for she said quietly, Paul, always remember that there are other worlds to sing in. Somehow I felt better. Another day I was on the telephone. Information, please. Information, said the now familiar voice. How do you spell fix? I asked. F-I-X. All this took place in a small town in the Pacific Northwest when I was nine years old. And then we moved across the country to Boston, and I missed my friend very much. Information, please, belonged in that old wooden box back home, and I somehow never thought of trying the tall, shiny new phone that sat on the table in the hall. As I grew into my teens, the memories of those childhood conversations never really left me. Often in moments of doubt and perplexity, I would recall the serene sense of security I had then. I appreciated now how patient, understanding, and kind she was to have spent her time on a little boy. A few years later, on my way west to college, my plane put down in Seattle. I had about a half an hour or so between planes. I spent 15 minutes or so on the phone with my sister who lived there now, then without thinking what I was doing. 
I dialed my hometown operator and said, information, please. Miraculously, I heard the small, clear voice I knew so well. Information. I hadn't planned on this, but I heard myself saying, could you please tell me how to spell fix? There was a long pause. Then came the soft spoken answer. I guess your finger must have healed by now. (laughs) I laughed. So it's really you, I said. I wonder if you have any idea how much you meant to me during that time. I wonder, she said, if you know how much your calls meant to me. I never had any children and I used to look forward to your calls. I told her how often I thought of her over the years, and I asked if I could call her again when I came back to visit my sister. Please do, she said. Just ask for Sally. Three months later, I was back in Seattle. A different voice answered. Information. I asked for Sally. Are you a friend, she said. Yes. A very old friend, I answered. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, she said. Sally's been working part-time the last few years because she was sick. She died five weeks ago. Before I could hang up, she said, wait a minute. Did you say your name was Paul? Yes. Well, Sally left a message for you. She wrote it down in case you called. Let me read it to you. The note said, Tell him, I still say, there are other worlds to sing in. He'll know what I mean. I thanked her and hung up. I knew what Sally meant.